Hi there. Welcome to this UCAMX version 2024.06 release overview. My name is Sylvia Lima and I'm with UCAMCO Belgium. In this video, I would like to take you through the new features and enhancements of our new release. As my tour guide, I will use the UCAMX version 2024.06 release overview you can find on our homepage at ucamco.com or via timeline on our info page info.ucamco.com. It's here and the timeline. There you can select the release you want to see. This release contains, for example, a new developed clipping preview, an automatic and manual way to use tracks in relation to a copper coverage in percent to fill up assembly or production panels, an extended calculation for the copper count of drilled subjobs, and many more features and enhancements. I will show and explain in pictures and live demos how these are working. Now, let me start with the clipping preview. This provides a fast visual pre check before the clipping is done. This prevents unnecessary rework because the reference can be optimized if the preview does not show the right results. Let's see how that looks in UCAM. I have prepared an example to show the new feature. In blue, you see the reference and everything around I would like to get clipped away. In the standard view you see on the screen, you see the track ends at the cutting position as a straight line. If I now open our clipping, you here now have the toggle to see the preview and a realistic view on what's there still after the clipping. Here the rounded lines and here the cutout of the flashes. And if I do it, you have the result. Now back to our next topic. Fill pattern is extended with the feature to fill areas with tracks in relation to cover coverage in percent. It is usable manually as a feature in fill pattern and automatically in panel plus. I will show the manual way in the pictures in the release overview and the automatic way as a live demo. This picture shows the example layer. The green frame here shows the result position in the upcoming pictures. This example is made by a fixed step and width. First, you choose fill with tracks for penalization. Then you select the hatch type, and here you see the fixed step and width and the activation. Here the result on the position of the green frame. The step from midline to midline is 3 mm, and the width of the lines is 0 0.5 mm. The toggle Keep Edge creates a frame around the hatched area. The next example is about fixed width and fixed copper count in percent. As you can see, the step is on zero and copper width 0 0.2 and 20% is activated. In the result, you see the track width with 0 point millimeter and the copper count at 20% controlled by the step. The other way around to fill with tracks is to specify the step and the copper count. The width stays on zero in that case, all is activated. The result shows the hatching with a step of three millimeters and the copper coverage is regulated with the width to ensure the specified value. Now up to the automatic filling in panel plus. To activate the automatic filling in relation to the copper coverage of the layer, you select here 
the fill with tracks for panelization. That will open the fill pattern GUI. Here you define, for example, the fixed step. I use three millimeter. You toggle on the copper count and give it any number in here. So it's a standard value, but with the toggle on, on width, depending on copper corresponding layer, it will always uh, regulate the copper coverage fitting to the coverage of the layer. To get an idea what this is doing, I switch to UCAM. The example is a four layer drop where the top layer has 29.4% of copper coverage in relation to the outline. The first inner layer has 88.2%, the second inner layer 84%, and the bottom layer has only 12.2% percent of copper coverage. If I now open the panel plus, I have here the choice to use pattern. This will open the fill pattern GUI. I select fill with tracks for panelization and the crosshatch type. I define the step with three millimeters and a width of zero. So I would regulate the copper coverage with the width of the tracks. The copper count gets a standard value, which will be uh, overruled by toggling on the width depending on copper corresponding layer. I want to keep the edge and I apply that to the panel plus. If I now go to the results and let it run on all layers, I have prepared an empty frame where only the useful area is prepared and let it run through. If we now have a closer look between the PCBs, I see on the top layer, we have a line width of 0 0.42805 millimeters. And uh, that is fitting to the copper coverage of 29.4%. Looking at the first inner layer, we have 1.69308 millimeter tracks, slightly smaller ones for the second inner layer, 1.603. And on the bottom line, where we only had the 12.2% of copper coverage, we have a line width of 0 0.35. So if I put everything on top of each other, let's see, for example, that and in blue, one of the inner layers, you can see the same step is used and the copper coverage is regulated by track width. That's it for this feature. I switch back to the release overview and the next topic, the extension to our copper count. The new time-saving feature in Copper Count allows users to calculate copper areas for all subjobs. You get the results with near to no effort. This job contains two subjobs. The lowest level is number three from layer 03 to layer 04. The next level is number two from layer 02 to layer 05. And the full build, of course, on level one from top to bottom. If I calculate the copper count and the copper count for sub jobs, you find that in the main menu, analyze copper count for jobs and for sub jobs, you will get reports like this. The level three is from layer three to layer four. Then layer names were 03 and 04. 
and you have a copper calculation in square decimeter, in square inch, and in percent. Next level is from layer 2 to layer 5 with the same calculations. And the last level, the level 1's calculation, looks like it always was. As a live demo would not make anything clearer, I switch to our next topic, the ATG output. The ATG output is enhanced to support up to 150 layers now and provides an enlarged usage for the well-known ATG output. This is a benefit for all high-layer jobs as it requires no additional hassle. As nothing has changed in the usage, I directly switch to the new development of Edit Contour Text. Contour Text is widely used for special characters, fonts and symbols. This new feature allows to edit it. That will reduce manual labor because no need to delete and replace again. The uncluttered GUI provides a comfortable and fast handling. I will show that in UCAM. I prepared a marking with Chinese characters, a few numbers and a special character. It is test 124 and the bracket closed. As you can see in this layer, there is only the contour. If I open that, and go to attributes, you see the text with the special characters in here. If I now want to edit it, I go to main menu, edit, contour text. And as soon as I click on the text, I get the contour text dialog. Here I have the possibility to, for example, change it. And then have a button, replace, and directly see the change in the text. As this is all, I switch back to the release overview and our next topic. And this is the extended view options. We have two new, very helpful view options. Number one is the step outline. This is showing the outline as a white frame to always know the PCB form. It provides a heightened view in case of mixed panel, for example. The second one is all PCBs. Activated, the sub-steps are shown either with the content of the layer or an enclosed rectangle of the data on that layer. It is a simplification of the view, especially in mixed panels. Here again, it is easier shown in a live demo. I start with the first option, the step outline. Normally, I have to activate an outline to see the form of the PCB. If I don't have it in any plane and color, I don't see the outline. With view, options, step outline, I get a white frame around my PCB and now have the possibility to always have an indication of the form of the layer and its outline. Here you can see how that outline is looking in a mixed panel. The second option, the all PCBs, is showing you either the real content of each PCB on that layer or if you shut it down or deselect the all PCBs, you get an enclosing rectangle for the data of each PCB on that layer. That means if I switch between layers, the rectangles switch too. So for example, if I have a look at that one and have a look in the real data view, I see that the bottom side is much bigger here. So that means the rectangle is bigger too. 
And that's it for this feature. I switch to the next one, which is the board analyzer. Our board analyzer is extended by the count of drilled slots as holes. The handling is the same as before, so no extra labor. With setting the UCAMDB key bap.holes.handle underscore slots to true, the slots are counted as holes. The hole statistic is changed. In the job I used here, the yellow marked diameters are slots. If I set the key to true, you see in the hole statistic they are counted as holes. If I set the key to false, you see a zero here because the slots are not seen as holes. I think this is clear enough and we don't need a live demo here. And I switch to the next topic, the extension of the output Gerber X2, X3. The Gerber output fully supports layer, aperture and object attributes now. If the UCAMDB key gerb.out.ape underscore all underscore ATTR is set to true, all attributes are handled. If set to false, only attributes predefined in the current Gerber specification are handled. You find the current Gerber specification on our homepage. And of course, there is always more. UCAM X version 2024.06 comes with a host of fixes for issues you have cared to report. Please keep on doing so. Your feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you. And as always, we list major open issues as soon as they are detected in the file open issues datecode.txt in the version folder on the FTP side. Please monitor this regularly to avoid potential production problems. We recommend to install this update at your earliest convenience. The installer can be downloaded from the UCAMCO FTP download server. We recommend to use an FTP client as most browsers do not support FTP. For questions, please contact our local business partner or the UCAMCO help desk. We thank you for choosing UCAMX. As we are already at the end of our tour through what's new in this release, the only thing left for me to say is thank you very much for your attention. You always can review this video with the link at the end of this release overview or on our YouTube channel. Thanks and bye bye.